guys. How are you doing this afternoon? Glad to have you guys here for this Thursday afternoon report. Uh, the thing is, is the bankers, banksters, uh, at the top levels of their organization, they're connected in. That they actually, the Federal Reserve is actually a privately owned institution. A lot of people don't know that. Who owns it? The banks own it. Uh, and all of the big banks are all linked in together, all of the big banks in the United States. Uh, they've been planning what they call a, uh, they know the crisis is coming. It's been planned for a long time. Uh, the first stage of bringing the crisis is to pump the system full of liquidity. And then to withdraw, the, to simultaneously withdraw the liquidity out of the system. And then it's a no-brainer. The system's going to fall. They know that we're getting awfully close. They're starting to test their systems to make sure that the banking system is actually going to, uh, that they can actually have the people be like sheep. And when they uh, do a long week, a long holiday, a, a holiday to the banking system, that we will all just fall in line and follow like sheep. So what they're doing is some of the bigger banks are already testing their systems, getting ready for this. Uh, HSBC is getting ready. Uh, I've got a recording off of the Internet here of HSBC. Uh, there's a number. Uh, I forget exactly what the number is, but you could call and listen to this message yourself. <laughs> uh, I found it off a of Prophecy Club. Uh, a site here on the internet called Prophecy Club, uh, and anyway, uh, this is uh, this is a recording of 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 HSBC's uh, machines, and they I think now personally, I could be wrong. Maybe it the the recording is talking about a bank holiday this weekend at HSBC, but I I think that they're really just testing the system. I don't think this is the real bank holiday. I think they're just testing the system, testing the water for the when the real bank holiday comes. Now, listen, I'm going to play this message. I'm going to play the, the telephone message for you guys. Uh, let's see. Okay, I guess I'll play it right now. Please note, HSBC will be upgrading our systems during the weekend of June 8th, which will result in service interruption. Checking and savings balances may not be accurate, and debit card transactions may not post for up to five business days after the upgrade is completed on Monday, June 11th. To avoid overdrawing your account, it's important to track your balances before, during, and up to five business days after the outage. Okay, that was the telephone message from HSBC. And... They're basically they're planning a bank holiday, and what what does this mean for all of you guys out there? Bank holiday, you probably don't understand what it means. Once they've closed all of the banks in the banking system, and they're going to do all the banks simultaneously, then what happens is is you don't have access to your money. You don't have access to credit either. Uh, across the entire country. There will be big, long lineups at the ATM machines. What they'll do is they'll give you uh, the uh, chance to take a limited amount out of the APM, a ATM, and they can set it, the ATM machine, so that it knows how much you took for the week. Uh, so it limits you. And what those limits are called, they're called capital controls. In a crisis situation, the banks are allowed to actually, uh, to be honest with you guys, the banks are allowed to take all your money and never give it back. When you signed your money over to the bank, you are now considered an unsecured lender to the bank. Uh, you're not even considered a depositor. You used to be, in the old days, you were called a depositor to the bank, and they had you had rights to that money to get it back. Now, in the small fine print, when you give them and you hand them your money, you're actually giving it to them. It's theirs. It's not yours. They don't have to, by law, they don't have to ever give it back. They can secure it, do whatever they want with it. Uh, and, and as far as the, uh, the Federal Deposit Insurance Commission, 
giving you insurance on your money up to, I think it's $100,000. They, they don't have enough money to pay out for all, the, for all the creditors in the United States. Simply put, they don't have it. And also, they've signed legally into law that the big shots will get that money first ahead of you. And they don't have enough to even supply all the big shots. The big shots are, will, will be fighting over over it. Almost, It's almost like if there's a bunch of vultures and you had one turkey leg, and you threw it out there and all the vultures were scrambling for it, are you going to get any meat off of that turkey leg? No. And this is the way with the Federal Deposit Insurance Commission. So don't feel like your money is safe. So what they're planning is what, H, what, what HBIC is doing. Uh, and the banks are all planning this simultaneously, and it's all linked into the reserve banks. So the little banks are all linked into the reserve banks, and the reserve banks are pulling the plug right now. All those years, everybody was crying, oh, we're going to have a hyperinflation, and the system's going to collapse and everything else, and it didn't happen. That's when the Federal Reserve and their buddy banks, like the BOE and the BOJ and, and all that, uh, and the Bank of China and all these different reserve banks on Earth, including the European Central Bank, they were all stimulating the economies of their respective countries, including the United States, with stimulus money. It was injecting liquidity into the system. They all simultaneously lowered interest rates so that they could inflate asset bubbles. This was all a plan, an organized plan. And now they're doing the exact opposite. Now they are raising interest rates which is the opposite of lowering them, and they are all simultaneously cutting off their stimulus programs or have their stimulus programs already cut off. And in the case of the United States, they are actually doing reverse stimulus. Reverse of stimulus, they're, they're withdrawing money out of the system. And this is, a, a, this, this is the trigger mechanism for the financial collapse. And now what we what do we see right now? We see the banks testing out, testing the water for the whole big swindle that they're pulling. This is a giant. Uh, I actually I said to my father we were driving to town the other day uh, a few days ago, and I said to them, I said to him, this is the biggest robbery in history. And he said, what do you mean? I said the banking systems of the earth, in a in a in an effort together, working together they are going to be able to complete the largest wealth transfer in the history of the world. They're going to rob all of your money. They're going to destroy all of your money. If, and, and listen, if I know what's going on with this, don't you think they know what's going on? They're all PhD experts and everything else. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. They're going to take all of your money. If you're in fiat, most people are, they're going to take all of your money. They're not worried about the few guys out there who got themselves a little bit of a hedge position against this. Because these rich guys, they've got massive hedge positions. So they're not worried about you. Take a look at the hedge position that J.P. Morgan Bank has in silver. You know? hundreds of millions of ounces he's not worried about your puny little bit of silver that you've got he's going to be make he's worried about what he's going to make and so if you make a little bit of money off of this he ain't he don't care they don't care they figure they're going to get it anyway later because once the initial moonshot of silver comes you watch in the middle of that moonshot watch legislation be put in from the governments that says that you've got to pay some sort of capital, not not really capital gains tax, but windfall profits tax of some sort or another, or profit of, or capital gains tax, and it's going to be like 90% of your profit, and they're going to get it if they can. 
but it's going to make a giant black market. But still, the idea is, in the end, what they're going to do is they're going to get all the gold and silver for themselves. And you say, well, how are they going to get it? Are they going to confiscate it? And all these guys out there have been talking about confiscation. They say, oh, you're going to confiscate your gold and silver. No, that's not how they're going to do it. They're going to bring a hyperinflation. And then when all of you guys are out there starving, Aunt Martha's earrings, silver earrings that she gave you on, her, on your anniversary, you're starving to death, right? There's going to be all these little dealers pop up everywhere in the black market wanting to buy gold and silver. And the price is going to be enormous. It might be thousands of dollars per ounce. Now, I'm going to tell you how they're going to get the silver off of you. Because you're starving, you're going to take that piece of silver in. And the, guy's going to, the guy's going to put it on a scale. He's going to say, oh, it's sterling silver. Yes, it's sterling silver. It's wonderful. Uh, what is sterling silver right now? Let's see. Uh, uh, $1,875 an ounce. And let's see. Uh, there's uh, five grams here. You know? Uh, that's uh, that's 500 bucks or whatever. <laughs> Maybe I didn't get the numbers quite right. Maybe 400 bucks. That's 400 bucks, you know. And that's going to feed you for a few days. So he gets that silver, right? And so does all the other black market dealers. They're just pulling in silver like crazy because people are starving. They're selling it. They're selling their jewelry. They're selling whatever they got. They're selling their coins. They're selling it to stay alive. Right? So all these little dealers, they take in this silver and the gold, your earrings, your, your rings, your watches, and everything else. It's all going to go out. It's all going to be smelted into bricks or, block, or, 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 uh, or bars, stamped with the grade. And it's all going to be shuttled back off to the big shots who are running the hyperinflation who are killing the dollar. And that's how they're going to get it all. And the guy and the, and the on the other end of this, they're going to be taxing the hell out of it. So they're going to get you on both ends, not just one end. If they were to come in and confis try to confiscate the stuff, first off, they'd have a hard time. They'd have to go, what, from door to door trying to get it. They wouldn't get half of it. They wouldn't even get a quarter of it. This way, they're going to get 90% of it, right? And they're going to be able to tax the hell out of you while they're getting it and if you go through the black market maybe you can avoid the taxes if you've only got a small amount of it and you go through the black market you might be able to avoid the taxes but they're still going to get the bar in the end anyway because all these guys in the black market are, are all going to sell to the uh to the basically they're like organized crime they're going to sell those bars back to organized crime and organized crime basically works for the government I mean, if you don't believe that, just check into some of these things like the like these cartels that they had running for years where they were running drugs. On one hand, they wage a war against drugs, and on the other hand, they're in the business. But they're in the upper end of the business, not the lower end. The lower end is where they dispense it all out, you know, and they, they treat all those people like criminals. But you get into the high end of it, you're going to find organized crime, and then above the organized crime, you're going to find the government. So, basically, the government is like a giant octopus with many tentacles. And, in fact, it's not even a unified government. The government isn't even unified. So, if you look at one part of the government, it might be above board. But that's what's called compartmentalization. The, part, the fact that parts of the government doesn't know what other parts of the government are doing. You know, that's called compartmentalization. It's a need-to-know basis. You work in your office, and you don't know what's going on in the office next door or the office above you. It's called compartmentalization. At any rate, this whole thing, this whole sticky business, is, 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 could be coming down very, very soon because it's all timed in to these interest rates going up. And the derivatives markets are all linked into these, inter these interest rates going up. And the interest rate's getting ready to explode at the end of this month. And I've been saying this on my channel. The interest rate's getting ready to explode because the Federal Reserve's going to raise another $10 billion. So they already got three done, $30 billion. Here comes the $40 billion coming at the end of this month. Uh, 
that means that these yields are going to rise. Now, once the, the uh, you got your three-year, three-month LIBOR, which it took a little bit of a break, come down just a little bit. It was going up like crazy. Come down just a little bit, and the reason why is because there are so many buyers of the U.S. ten-year came in, and those greedy buyers buying up the U.S. ten-year because they're all looking for yield. Almost every pension plan, it's in their it's in their portfolio. They have to buy, I think it's at least 60% of treasuries, almost every pension plan. And so when they see treasuries go on sale, I mean, this is a sale. This is, a, this is like a store closing. You know, when they put the big sign up, it says 70% off all merchandise. That's what these guys see. They see dollar signs when they see uh, the treasury yields going up like that. The treasury yield goes up to 3.1%. And on the 10-year, uh, and higher yet on the 30-year, and what they see is dollar signs, and they're all they all race in to buy, and that's what drove the price back down again. But what they don't realize is the Fed is selling 4.5 trillion dollars. That's 4,500 billion dollars worth of these suckers, and eventually these buyers are going to run out. Their pockets are only so deep. What happens? We're going to see yields going up and seriously up, and it's going to be a bloodbath, not just for the yields, but for the stock market, too. This whole system's going to fold in on itself. They're getting ready. That's why this phone call. They're testing their system. They're testing the water because they know what's coming. You're going to go to your HSBC branch, local branch, or, or any of these other branches of of, of of uh, the bank of this bank, that bank, you name it, uh, all the biggest banks, every bank, and there's going to be chains wrapped around the doors. Probably why they buy the type of glass doors that they buy. Uh, they got the handles on the outside of the door, and the handles come together so they can just slide a chain right through there and wrap it around a couple times and put a padlock on it. That's why they've been putting their redo in the front of the bank. So they got it ready for this. They want you to be able to look inside. That's why glass all across the front of the bank so you can see inside that there's nobody in there, <laughs> that the lights are out, and there's a big chain across the door. And then when this time comes, what they will do is they will have the police force stationed there, probably a SWAT team stationed there waiting for you. So you get to the bank and you say, "Is I want to go to the bank, and they'll say, get away from the building. And you'll say, what? My money's in here. My money." Get stand back from the building. They'll be they'll be all padded in there. You know how the SWAT teams look, and they'll be training their guns on you. Just if you just go to go check your account out to see what your balance is, and they'll be training their guns on you. This is our banks. This is how good our banks are. They're getting ready for you. Listen, thank you guys for listening to this report, and we we'll catch you in the next report coming up soon. Bye bye for now.